All right. Come on, give Jesus all the praise, everybody. I said give Jesus all the praise, everybody. <laughs> all right. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him you're looking so fine today. Come on, tell him. Now turn to your second choice on the other side. Say, you don't look so bad yourself. All right. There's always a second choice, and you made it. You know what? All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. I'm really, really honored to be here. Um, I really deeply love your church and your pastor. Like, I love him a lot. I feel safer around Pastor Chris. I mean, his... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the size of my thighs, you know, so we were at, at, at dinner last night, like, I just wish somebody would pick a fight with him, you know, I just want to see it, and, uh, but anyway, it didn't happen, so um, I'm really glad to be here, uh, greetings from uh, uh, your church family in, in Alabama, everybody, Church of the Highlands, uh, they know I'm here with you today, and we know all about what you're doing and how You've grown over these past 12 years and all that God's done. We're celebrating that with you guys uh, in every way. I love your pastor a lot. I love Miss Brandy a lot as well. Don't you love your pastors? Y'all want to give them a hand, everybody? Come on. Show some love for them. <laughs> all right. There are two things he didn't tell you about me that you have to know in order to understand where we're going today. And, and one is, is um, uh, I'm a Cajun from South Louisiana, okay? And uh, yeah. So I have churches in Alabama, but I'm, from, but I'm from South Louisiana, I'm a Cajun, which means you might not learn anything, but we are going to have a good time, all right, everybody? Okay, so, we're not known for our brains, we're known for our fun, so I just want you to, want you to know that. And I also want you to know, I'm a, I'm big, I'm a big family man, I've got a, I've got a wife of, of, of now 37 years, come on somebody, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and we have five kids and eight grandkids. And uh, any, any grandparents in the room? Grandparents? Grandparents? Yeah. They, so they clap because um, uh, your grandkids are better than your kids, everybody. All right. So if you don't have any grandkids yet, let your kids live. Better ones are coming. Hang in there, everybody. All right. Just a little piece of advice. Okay. Um, all right. I want to I wanna give you a really simple message, and I just want to apologize for how simple this is in advance. I mean, I can go deep. And I always tell our church, I could deepen our church down to about 40 people if I wanted to. And uh, so, because uh, deep usually just means confusing. But anyway, um, but I want to give something really simple, but it's incredibly uh, practical. And it's really, really important. And it kind of frames who I, who I see myself. I don't really see myself as a, as a preacher or a teacher or just a speaker or something like that. I really consider myself like a tour guide. And I don't know if you've ever been somewhere uh, where you're, you're visiting for the first time, and because you don't know where everything is, the restaurant, the sites, you maybe hire someone or get into a group of someone who's very aware of the territory and you're not. And so what they do is they take you and say, hey, let me show you this because you just didn't know this was there and you don't even know the significance of this. And so they're taking you to different spots. They're a tour guide. Uh, that's kind of how I see my role in the church with our, with our church especially, it's like, I just want to show you stuff you didn't know was there. And it's just right around the corner. And if you saw it, like you take pictures of it and you would enjoy it. Yeah. That God has, let me, here, let me say it this way, that God has more for you than you could possibly realize. Yeah. And so all you need, you don't need, a, you don't need someone yelling at you or pointing their finger in your face. Or, or you just need somebody to tell you, that here, here it is. Yeah. And there's a, there's a key to the entire spiritual journey. So let me stop right there and say every one of you are on a spiritual journey, whether you realize it or not. I had an atheist one time said, I'm not on a spiritual journey because I'm not spiritual. And I said, yeah, I know you don't believe in God. I said, but don't you miss him? <laughs> and they said, yeah, like, because they're, cause they're on a spiritual journey. They can't take the spirit of God out of them. Come on, somebody say amen right there. You can't get the part of God that he put inside of you, out of you, it's looking for God, whether you don't believe he's there or not. Everybody's on a spiritual journey, watch this, and everybody has another step. So everybody, myself included, it doesn't matter how long you've known the Lord or been in church, there, there, you have more to experience of God, and what I love doing is helping people get there. And I love this particular verse right here out of Jeremiah chapter 29. Two main verses I want to show you, one in the Old, one in the New Testament. And this is the Old Testament verse. And the Bible just simply says, I have plans for you. That ought to bring you great joy. God has plans for you. And they're not bad, they're good. And not for disaster, but they're to give you a future and a hope. And, um, and so you, you <laughs> leave here today realizing that God sees you, loves you, is concerned about what's going on in your life, but he wants to take you to that next place in him. But there's a catch. 
And I want to make sure you see it because a lot of people don't realize uh, this catch. And that's why they're not finding that place in the city on the tour that they didn't know was there because they don't know the catch. And I want to talk to you about the catch. And it's found in verse 13. And it goes like this. You only find it when you really look for me wholeheartedly. So like if you do it halfway, you don't find it. You've got to kind of go all in. And you've got to really give God your best in that process. And so I have a very simple goal today. It's very, very simple. And that is I want to show you what the, your possibilities are. And I just want to do my part to try to get you going, all right, to get you moving. So some people, they just kind of get stuck. Maybe you've even used that word to describe yourself. I just feel stuck. I'm hopefully going to get you unstuck today. You'll at least know what you could do if you wanted to do it, all right? And so I'm just going to show you them, give you a little encouragement, tell some stories and have some fun, pray, and go eat some roast beef. Amen, everybody? All right. Okay. So let me give you this thought right here. I'll never get the best of what God has to offer until I give God my best. So let, you, let that thought just kind of be in your heart. I'll never get the best that God has to offer if I don't give God my best. So you have to go all in with God. Now I want to show you now what those steps could possibly be. Now they're all over the Bible. I could literally start as early as the second book of the Bible. There are 66 of them. I could start with the second one, the book of uh, Exodus. And I could literally take you all the way through the end of the New Testament and show you at least 14 places, Old Testament and you, how God has always wanted basically four things for you in your spiritual journey. And I want to show it to you in a prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed uh, in one of the churches that he planted. So basically your New Testament, a lot of your New Testament are letters that this church planter named Paul wrote to the churches he planted. And they were usually either named for the pastor that plant, planted it, so the letter would be to the pastor. So if it had a, a person's name like Timothy, uh, it would be to the pastor of the church. But if it didn't have a person's name, it was written to the church itself in the city it was in. And in this case, it was in the city of Ephesus, which is in modern-day Turkey, all right? And he had planted a church there, and now we get this book called Ephesians. I just like giving some of the context, all right? And here's the prayer he prayed. He says, I keep asking. So in other words, every day I get up, I pray, and I ask God, the Lord of our Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That basically means that just the lights would come on. And I, by the way, I got up very early this morning and I prayed one single prayer for the people of City Reach, and that is just the lights would come on. That's something you've heard or seen, or maybe never heard or seen. It's going to go, I see it. I see it for the first time. That's what he was praying, praying to see what. And then he mentions four things in the prayer. I wish they could just see how important it is for people to know God, to be in this relationship with God. And he uses a word right here, know. Um, I actually took three semesters of Greek in seminary, um, and it's still Greek to me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it, I actually took three semesters, so I understand a little bit of the, of the original language that the Bible is written in. And anybody, by the way, that says, oh, the Bible's changed down through the years with all the different translations, it's not true. We still have the original manuscripts that we're building out Scripture from, so that's just a lie. Anyway, the word here is the word gnosko uh, in the Greek. And it's an intimate term. So it doesn't mean no God, it means no God. It, it, it doesn't, it's the same word that's used when it says Adam knew his wife and they had a baby. Okay, so it's not a sexual term, but it's an intimate term. And Paul's saying one of the things that people are missing in Christianity and in, uh, and in church and whatever you call faith is the fact that it's not religious, it's more relational. So God didn't need, wasn't looking for your church attendance. He was looking for your heart. He was looking for a real relationship. And he said, I just wish people, I just wish people knew that. And then he says, and then I, secondly, I pray that the eyes of your heart get enlightened. To which when I first read this, I thought, well, Paul, your eyes aren't on your heart. <laughs> they're on your head, my brother. You know, and to which he would say, no, they're, you're not looking through these. You're looking through this. You're looking through everything that's ever happened to you up to this point, good or bad. I call it your pain, past, problems, and people. Everything that's happened to you, you're looking through a filter that's happened in your heart. That's why every one of us are looking at the same thing and all of us are seeing it different based on what we experienced up to this point. And Paul says, man, I sure wish there was a moment in your spiritual journey where you not only got close to God, but I wish there was a part where you started dealing with some of the stuff that's going on on the inside. Because it's messing you up and it's slowing you down and it's stopping you from all that I have for you. Because remember... I have a plan for you. 
And it's good to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. And this is part of the step in order to get there. He says, but if you do, if you would all get really close to God and if you would kind of start dealing with some of your heart issues, he says, then you'll know the hope to which he has called you. So like you have a calling. So if you don't leave here with anything else, hear this. You're just as called as I am or Pastor Chris is or anyone else you would know. Like there's a call of God on your life. No, I'm not in the ministry. Oh, yes, you are. Like everybody here is a piece of God's puzzle, so to speak, for him to accomplish that which he wants to do on the earth. And the Bible says that whenever you know your calling, hope gets attached to it. Because the greatest way to find hope isn't to solve all your problems, it's to have something in your life bigger than your problems. So if I know why I'm on the planet, well, then I have hope. But if I'm just wandering through trying to pay bills, come on, somebody, right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's no hope attached to that. But there's a hope to which he has called you. And then he gets to this last phrase, and then he says, I wish people could see that you have an inheritance. You know, and some of you are thinking, well, praise God, we got to the fun part here. No, it's not money, um, although he will bless you. Uh, our inheritance is people. That God will use us to impact not just this room and not just the next service or maybe just a few other people. Like the whole city of Austin can be impacted because, because we found our calling and we found our calling because we dealt with our past, and we dealt with our past because we got closer to God. And so I just want you to see the journey. Like there's a progression here, and every one of us has another step in it. Are y'all following me, yes or no? Everybody got it? Okay, good. So let me, now, that's, I gave you the inspiration that God has a plan, it's good. And then I told you what the plan is. So now let me get you, get you going a little bit. I'm just going to try to gent, gently, very gently, bah. Just, y'all know, this is Texas. You know what a cattle prod is. All right, let's go. Okay, it's like, uh, just a little bit, uh. No electricity in the first one. Uh, I might turn it on on the second one. Uh, no, we'll see. Okay, all right. But it's time. It's so simple. It's time to get closer to God. Okay, so I know that's just so simple. But it's, for some of you, you needed somebody to get on a stage today, just look in the eye and say, um, it's going to keep looking like what it's looking like. Unless you decide, you know what, I'm going to lean into God more. I'm going I'm to wake up 15 minutes earlier in the morning, and I'm going to let, before I, before I look at Instagram or constantly negative news, I mean CNN, I'm not going to before I look at any of that. I'm going to look into God's word, I'm going to listen to a worship song, and I'm going to lay my request before my king. Look at me, look at me. And if you did, your life would be so much better. Like if you just leaned into the fact that God wants to know you. And by the way, if you think anything religious qualifies, you would re I would want to tell you that, that it's not counting on God's side of that ledger, okay? I'll show it to you. This is the verse that I actually came to Christ with. So I actually led myself to the Lord in my bedroom. Um, I had heard the gospel at 15 years old. I knew the Bible, but I wasn't a Christian. And I didn't want to trust church or anybody else. So I actually uh, went and I says, I'm not listening to any church. I'm only listening. In fact, I said, I'm not even going to listen to the Bible. I'm only listening to Jesus. And I had one of those red letter edition Bibles, and I just read the red. And if you don't know what that is, that means where the words of Jesus are in red ink and the rest of them are in black. And I skipped all the black, just went straight to the red. <laughs> Got three pages in, and this verse was there. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. To which I thought, well, that's a problem. Because <laughs> that's what they told me to do. <laughs> Just call him, Lord, you're in the club. You know, like, and he's going, no, me not. He says, I'll tell them plainly. And by the way, there's that same word that Paul used in the other text. I never had relationship with you, intimacy, closeness with you. I never knew you. And I would just like to look across this auditorium. I don't know if you're a follower of Christ or not, or if you're kicking the tires of faith or whatever, where you are, or if you've been a Christian for a long time and it's gone stale, I'm just trying to tell you it's time. For you get to get closer to God. Amen, everybody? And I want to personally invite you to the breakthrough service uh, tonight because I have a message that I believe will help your walk with Christ, especially in your morning time with God, like nothing I've ever experienced in knowing Jesus for 45 years. Secondly is because you have heart issues, and like you do, by the way. <laughs> all of us do. All of us have stuff in here that's, that's blocking stuff, okay? All of us. All right? And... And all of us have issues. 
okay? I have issues, you have issues. If you don't think you have an issue, well, that's your issue, okay, everybody? Okay. <laughs> okay, but I'm here to tell you <laughs> that the secret to dealing with our issues is going to surprise you. And I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. Let me tell you what it is first. And that is that it's time to get honest with another believer. So, like, the only way you really deal with your issues is letting somebody know. You say, well, I'm just, I'm just praying about it. So I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to pray about it. I'm just going to let God just help me. It won't work. I hate to tell you that, but it won't work. Now, he likes hearing from you. He doesn't mind you telling him about your problems. But I'm going to show you in Scripture that he has a different prescription for our heart issues. Okay, and it's going to shock you just a little bit. It's found in James chapter 5, and it goes like this. Therefore, confess your sins not to God. Therefore, confess your sins not to God, but one to another, and pray for each other so that you'll be healed. Now, you go to God for forgiveness, but you go to God's people for healing. Meaning that, Lord, I did this sin, please forgive me. Okay, I'll do that part. Now, now people can't forgive you. Only God can do that. But when I really want to not do it again, oh, i got to let somebody know. I have to let somebody know. And that's why I would say it's time. For some of you, you've been coming here, and you're involved, and praise God. And you're going to heaven, by the way. I'm, I'm very excited about that. And uh, I really am. But there's more. And if you ever really wanted to deal with your heart stuff, you're going to have to at some point, this is, I know it feels risky. It feels risky to me. At some point, you're going to have to have the confidence to go up to somebody in this room or in your small group that you trust and say, guess what? Like, I, I click too much. I look too much. I drink too much. I, I'm sick of this. And all of us in this room have an, something in our life that if it wasn't in their, our life, our life would be better. Yeah. And you'll actually deal with it once and for all if you'll tell somebody. And that's the power of spiritual confession. It's, the, it's this place where we, in our church, and I'm sure it's true here too, it's in small groups where I, 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 we might study something, do something, but really the goal wasn't to study something or do something. It was to meet somebody that I can trust who can pray with me and say, hey, Chris, I'm going to walk with you through this, and we're going to get better with this together, and together we're going to overcome this in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody? You got it? All right. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you, okay? And so, and so I really would I want to encourage you to get closer to God. If you're not as close as you need to be, just it's time to lean in, please. I'm just encouraging you. For some of you, it's time to get rid of this junk, and it's time to get, uh, to get, to get really uh, honest with somebody. And the third is, I would encourage you, it's time to discover your real purpose in life. So you're, you have a purpose, and you're probably going to go do it tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, okay? And that might be your purpose. And it might even be your real purpose. But for a lot of people... Uh, studies say about 87% of the body of Christ is not involved in their real purpose. Meaning, you've never really discovered why you're really here. The part that actually makes a difference for eternity. The part where you're going to have that final, you're finally going to have that sense of significance. Like, wow, I've leaned into this. So I just want to tell you, because some people just don't know, God already put it in you. Like you have a gift. It didn't say you can go find it. No, you have a gift. Now, for some of you, you haven't found it, but it's still in there. And let me describe what it looks like. It's the thing that if you did it, you'd like doing it, but it would also make the difference in somebody else's life. And then you lay your head down at night thinking, that's how you live a day. Boy, I'd love to do that with Chris Gilkey's arms. That's how you live a day. That would be so much cooler if, ooh, like my, and then the buttons go, you know, like he does. All right. But this is all you got, brothers. This is, sorry. You get your eye candy back next Sunday, everybody. All right. There's not nothing here. Okay. All right. But you have a grace gift, everybody. You have a grace gift. Man, I want you to know what it is. I would love for you, because, because it's going to feel like, oh. I found it. And it's the sense of significance. And remember, hope's attached to it. Because I know you have problems. I know you have stuff you're thinking, if this doesn't get solved, my life's, why live? And that's why God's saying, that might not ever change. I'm so sorry to tell you. Like, politics might never change. The economy might never change. It might never rain. It might rain all day. I can't change that. But if you had something in your life bigger than all of that, 
it's just so much better, and I just wish you had it, because if you had it, then you could do this final thing, and this is really where I want to really get the cattle prod out today, and that is, it's time to do something. Like, don't just find it, but do it. And to do something, I love saying it this way, greater than me. Now, there's only one way you can do something greater than you. Let me make sure you know. And that is if you're on a team. So you can only do something greater than you when you find somebody else to do it with. And collectively, that's, that's, that's why, <laughs> you know this, like one plus one in God's economy isn't two. One plus one is ten. When you decide to partner together, that's why he puts us together in a church family, in a local church. And then if you do it, you're thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm doing what real Christianity is. And I'll show you that this is what real Christianity is, okay? So don't miss this because this is the words of the one that you have surrendered your life to. If you're a Christian, the one you surrendered your life to and say, you're my Lord, said this. It's to my Father's glory that you bear fruit. And that proves you're a disciple. It's the fruit bearers. Like, how do you know who the real Christians are? Oh, they're out there. They're out there doing stuff that's changing lives. They're bearing fruit. That's what they do. And he says, and if you do this, there's a dot, dot, dot there because there's more verses I'm getting ready to show you. And you would think the next line is going to be something like, because now the hungry will have food and the poor will be cared for. And the sick will have somebody to pray for them. And, and all that's true, but that's not what he says. He said, it's to my Father's glory that you're a productive Christian bearing fruit. And if you do this, I told you all this, so that my joy may be in you. Like, it's not even for them. It is. But it's really more for you. Let me give you an illustration. So um, I, I really believe in extravagant generosity. I think it's one of the most important things we can do as a Christian is, like, show the love of God to people. And I love doing it, like, especially to people that I know that, like, a dollar, a, a dollar makes a big, bigger deal to some people than others, right? And so, like, when you're at a restaurant or something, I love giving what we call in Alabama a honking tip. You know what a honking tip is? Okay, for you sophisticated people, that's a very generous gratuity. All right, so it's, it's just a lot, so a little bit more. Okay. So they, lead, so you know, rather than the fifteen percent or twenty percent, like you add, maybe double that, and then and it shocks them. So I love doing that, especially when God moves my heart. And I had this one server. She was, she, 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 we were at PF Chang's, my it's my fa my family's favorite restaurant. We call it Pff Chang's, and so we just like going there. And and, and um, we were eating, and this girl was just she w couldn't keep up with all the tables. You could tell she was frantic. There was too, she had too much to do. Probably somebody else didn't show up. And so she was late, glasses were empty. And normally it's like, hey, hey, you know, and I just, at first, I, had, I felt the opposite of that. I thought, oh, bus. So she came around and I said, Mick, I know you're busy, uh, but uh, take care of everybody else, get to us last. And she's like, nobody tells me, nobody ever says that. And you could tell. And, and so anyway, she came back by, she kind of finally got to us, fills our glasses and everything. And I, and I, and I said, I said hey, I, um, hey, I just want you to know God loves you. And she goes, why are you saying that to me? I said, I don't know. I'm a pastor. I just felt like encouraging you a little bit. And a little tear popped out. And then she shoves it back in like she knows that's the wrong place for that. And she goes, thank you. You have no idea. I said, and I was thinking, yeah, I probably do. And um, so when we left, I left a honking tip, like a really good one. And she, she came. And we were walking out. She came back. She caught me at the door. And she goes, why did you do that? And I said, to show you the love of God. And, and now I've flooded. You have no idea what I'm going through and how much this means. And I said, Jesus loves you. And I walk out there thinking, who else, Lord? You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> you know how that feels. Go feel it. Go do it. And you can never do it if you can't, don't find your role in it, and you can never find your role in it. If you're still there with your yesterdays, and you can never find your yesterdays. If you haven't gotten close to the one who can heal your yesterdays. It's time. It's just time to get moving with this thing. Like, there are so many opportunities in this church for you to have that. You know, we have a worship one, serve one kind of mentality here at the church. Meaning, don't just go to church one service, go two. Every one of you should be going to two services. Really? Yes. 
Like worship in one of them and go serve in the other. And you will say the one you served in was, was, it was you liked it better than the one you worshiped in. I mean, he's a good preacher and everything, but it, like, it was way more fun to sit in that circle with their fourth grade boys and they're telling you about their issues and you were the one. My favorite people growing up were my Sunday school teachers. I can't even tell you who my pastors were. I can almost name every Sunday school teacher I grew up with because they changed my life. Go get involved in children's ministry. And you'll leave going, church was great today. Why? What did he preach on? Ah, wait a minute. What did he preach on? Uh, and you'll talk about the service you served in. Are y'all listening to me, everybody? All right. So somebody play behind me so I'll close. Okay, all right. Here. All right, look at me. It's closing illustration. So, um, So when I go home from work every day, I have, I have a, I'm on a six-lane highway, and there's a left turn where I get off that highway, it's heading toward my neighborhood. And that left turn lane, there's always a zillion cars in it. I know how many cars can get through that left turn in one light cycle if everybody will go. <laughs> like, you know what I'm feeling? Y'all feeling me? Okay, okay. All right. So I knew, the other day I was at the very edge of that where I can get through it. And I saw the, the car in front of me with her head down. It looked like long hair, so I assumed it was a girl. And, and you could see, you could tell they were just texting. And I'm thinking, it's going to turn green, and, and she ain't going. <laughs> and I'm a honker, okay? I don't know if you're a honker or not. My wife hates me to honk. And she's always telling me, don't do that. They probably go to our church. And I say, well, good. I'm their pastor, and they need to learn something. <laughs> like, you know. It's like, it's, it's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> and so, so, so the light turns green and she doesn't go. And that my wife's voice is in my ear. She, she's not sitting next to me, but it's, she's still in my head. <laughs> and so instead of, mm, which is what I felt, I just went, beep, beep. Just that little bit, you know, just that. And she looked up and, oh, yeah, and then go. And we missed the light. Okay, we missed it. All right. <laughs> When I'm preaching this message, when I'm preaching this message, the, the polite thing, especially my first time at City Reach, the polite thing is give you the boop, boop version. But in my heart, I'm not saying it. But let me tell you what I would say if I was saying it that way. <laughs> really? You're going to pay for your own sins? Really, you're going to wake up every day and let Instagram be the first thing you see? Really? Really? You're going to live another year without addiction? Really? Really? You're going to go on, hide. Do you know how hard it is to hide something? And you're going to keep that up? Really? You want to just let purpose just be whatever finds you instead of you going after it? And really, you just want to come and go and let your church experience just be three songs and the best sermon you ever heard in your life? That's all. <laughs> and you're not going to do anything about it? But I couldn't see it that way because that would be too strong. My wife's voice is in my head, so I won't do that. Come on, everybody. It's time to take a step toward God, everybody. Amen. Bow for prayer. Everybody bow for prayer. Everybody bow for prayer. Make your decision right now. Make it. Make a decision. Maybe if you don't know God, that today's my day. I'm going to give my life to Jesus. Make your decision. I am not living with this addiction anymore. Make your decision. I will next Sunday get on the next steps track, and I'm going to find my purpose. For some of you, you need to go out in the lobby right now and say, where do I sign up to serve in children's ministry? Where do I, how do I get to drive a golf cart in the parking lot? Make your decision. And if you're here today and you're far from God, pray this prayer. In fact, everybody in this room, pray it out loud with me. Everybody, everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. thank you for dying on the cross, paying for my sins. Today I receive what you did for me by surrendering my life completely to you. Forgive me. Change me. Come live inside of me. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe 
You died and rose again. And today, I put my faith in you. In your name I pray. Amen. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. God bless you.